Hi everyone, my name is Margot Dwyhe and I am the author of Scorched Grace. Scorched Grace is available in the US with Gillian Flynn Books. It's the debut title of Gillian Flynn's new publishing imprint with Zando. And it's also available in Ireland and the UK with Pushkin Vertigo. And Scorched Grace is my take on a hard-boiled inspired mystery in which we have a voice-driven, raw, gritty, visceral experience of a person obsessed with solving a riddle and delivering an unexpected, fresh twist on the whodunit. Our protagonist is named Sister Holiday, and she is a hot-tempered, gold-toothed, iconoclastic, tatted-up, queer, punk nun. She is devout, no one knows what to make of her, and she's recently moved from her life in Brooklyn, New York, to New Orleans, where she's joined the Sisters of the Sublime Blood, which is a progressive and nonetheless Catholic order of sisters. The beginning of the novel introduces us to Sister Holiday's voice, the way she sees the world, and it also establishes the scene in which the inciting incident occurs. The devil isn't in the details. Evil thrives in blind spots in absence, negative space, like the haze of a sleight of hand trick. The details are God's work. My job is keeping those details in order. It took me four and a half hours to do the laundry and clean the stained glass, and my whole body felt wrecked. Every tendon strained, even swallowing hurt. So when my sisters glided into the staff lounge for the meeting, Folders and papers pressed against their black tunics. I slipped into the alley for some divine reflection. A smoke break. It was Sunday. Dusk. Vice on the Sabbath. I know. Not my finest moment, but carpe diem. An hour to myself was all I needed. An aura of menace taunted me all day. The air was thick and gritty, like it wanted to bare-knuckle fight. Sticky heat, typical in New Orleans, but worse that day. The sun, the swollen red of a mosquito bite, slow simmer belying the violence of the boil. I couldn't sit through another reprimand. Fall term was a week in, and two kids had already filed grievances against me. She's always on us, a student scrawled. I can't feel my fingertips. Another, anonymous I might add, Music classes torture! Three exclamation points. I worried that Sister Augustine, our principal and mother superior, sturdy and sure as a sailor's knot, would interrogate me in front of everyone during Sunday's meeting, which would inevitably lead to Sister Honor's weaponizing of minor infractions for her crusade against me. That woman's bullshit was so skillfully honed, it was almost holy. And sure, my expectations were high, the highest. St. Sebastian's was one of the few private Catholic schools left, far from fancy, but definitely elite. I made my classes practice for an hour at a time, five days a week, like they were real ensembles. How else would they learn? Day in, day out, you must commit. I'd be doing the students and God a disservice otherwise. To suffer is a privilege. Pain is evidence of growth. And everyone is capable of change, even me. But that doesn't mean I always got it right. Whenever I was punished, my task was to clean the massive stained glass windows of the church. I'd climb up on our rickety ladder and shine the glass, pane by intricate pane. 11 in total, bold blue, coral, fern green, and my favorite, sanguine, the color of sacred wine, the living red of a singing tongue during Vespers. Our stained glass told stories from the Old and New Testaments, Moses akimbo, parting the cerulean sea, the evangelists, Mark as a winged man, Mark a lion, Luke a flying ox, and John an eagle. The slow motion trauma of the stations of the cross Adoring angels floating above the manger during the birth of Christ, our Lord, holding luminous harps like jewels in their small hands. So beautiful, 
it hurt to look sometimes. Like watching people in church as they kneel and pray, howl and lose balance. I see people at their absolute lowest. I hear people beg God and Mary and Jesus for second chances. One planet away from their spouses or kids next to them in the pew, or so alone they've thinned to ghosts. We're always there, us nuns, to witness, to hold space for miracles in the terror, in the boredom, in the wretched gore of life, to take it in, watch your hands tremble, validate your questions, honor your pain. But you never see us seeing you. Nuns are slippery like that. With my special cloth, I wiped Jesus's crown of thorns and the doves of peace. The gilded vignettes reminded me of my tattoos. Inca was required to cover, even in the soupy heat of August, with black gloves and a black neckerchief, one of Sister Augustine's contingencies. Cleaning the windows was supposed to be my penance, and it was bone tiring, but I liked the work. Each panel bewitched me. Better drama than Facebook or a bar fight. During the first of countless castigations doled out by Sister Augustine, I discovered that if you pressed your face to Mary's face in the nativity glass, you could peer right through her translucent eye and see New Orleans shimmering below like a moth wing. On the highest rung of the ladder, my eye to Mary's eye, I saw Falberg Lividay unfold to the left, Chapatula Street, in the hypnotic ribbon of Mississippi, the Mississippi River to the right. The city was electric at every hour, but at dawn, I was astonished by the wattage of color that vibrated in the silken light. Pink, yellow, and persimmon-painted shotgun homes stretched out in the garden district, long and narrow as train tracks. Purple and green Mardi Gras beads and gray Spanish moss dripped from the branches of gnarled oak trees. I watched the streetcar roll up and down St. Charles, passengers slowly climbing on and off as the metal trolley bell peeled through the air. Most fools imagine New Orleans as schlock and caricature, the tyranny of Bourbon Street and the green terror of jello shots, Gro throwing your guts up on the curb or into your crawfish etouffee. Yeah, I've rolled my eyes at that nonsense in the French Quarter, but the city is more complex and hauntingly subtle than I ever imagined, mythical and true. As true as any story can be. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'm so excited to share Scorched Grace with you.